Hi everyone, so I wanted to show you how I made the houses that go at the back of my haunted village. Now these ones need to be flatter because they're up against a wall um, and really all I want is like the fascia of it. So what I did was make a narrow box like this, more like a sort of tray shape really. And obviously as you can see I've just used random card from different food packaging and I hot glued and put masking tape on the corners just to hold them while the hot glue dried and then it's just a case of adding a roof and details to the front of it like you would a regular 3d model of a house it well I mean it still is 3d but it's not as deep like it doesn't have a back to it or anything um, and it's all made exactly the same way as I did the there's the original haunted house video I put up, um, which is a full three, 360 degree model. I'll put a link to that in the description. So, like I said, I made this basic rectangle shape, first of all. And then what I did was made the roof for it. And all you do to make the roof is you need a triangle of card. And you stick that on top of the box and then fill in the space in the triangle with a piece of card and that gives you the roof shape um but the first thing i did as you can see is i put the door on first and that's dead easy it's just a um rectangle of card with a curved top to it that you just stick in place and this is how i made the roof i think Oh, so the first thing I made actually was the porch. <laughs> it's all right, I'm recording the audio for this like a day after I made it, so I forgot what I did first. So take a strip of cardboard with a little, little sort of folded lip on it and glue that to the front. That's going to form the roof of the porch way for the house. And just stick that on with plenty of hot glue. It'll hold on fine and then... When the base is stuck on and the support beams for the porchway, it's even more secure. And I cut out a rectangle of card to form the base. And you have to make sure the base doesn't stick out past the back of the model. It has to be level with the back of the model. Um, again, so it will go against the wall to form the background for the haunted village. And then I cut out strips of um, card and stuck them together to form the support beams for the porchway. And I did, was it two, maybe three, I think it was two or three pieces of card stuck together. Because this card I'd got wasn't, it was thick but not like particularly overly thick and strong. So I wanted to make sure it was nice and sturdy. So yeah, it's about two or three layers of card to form these pillars. And then it's just a case of putting some glue at the top and the bottom later on just to make sure they stay in place like so and you'll see me faff about when I make the second one because I did actually make it a little bit too short um, but I just made another one in the end and stuck that into place and then you'll see in a bit what I do is do another couple of layers of card again to make it thicker and this is where I, f I think it was a bit short, but I thought it wouldn't matter if it was a bit sort of lopsided, but it just wouldn't hold with the hot glue. The hot glue wasn't uh, cooling fast enough to hold it in place. In the end, I made a slightly larger one. But you could have it sloping like that if you just had patience and um, held it for a bit longer. Um, it just adds to the sort of more older, slightly more collapsing haunted house type look. The cardboard was a bit thick for this, so it kept popping the glue off. I did bend and manipulate the um, cardboard a bit just to get it to stick, but in the end I did take it off and make a new one, a new beam. That was me losing patience, because I wasn't going to sit there all day um, holding it in place. So I made a new one slightly longer. 
exactly the same method two or three layers of glue it's about just over half a centimeter wide and about three centimeters three four centimeters long roughly um i didn't measure anything i never do measure anything um i prefer to make the models sort of as is i'm not too worried about perfection and measuring everything um so yeah so sometimes i just have to uh, redo bits but i don't mind then the next thing i did was actually finally the roof and for that um once i sketched out the windows that is um yeah i sketched out the windows in ballpoint paint because it doesn't matter because it's all going to get covered in um, glue and cardboard um and to do the roof, as you can see, I just got a rectangle of card that I could fold in half that was long enough. Cut it so it was it would stick out at the front of the model, so it forms like a sort of canopy over the front of the model. But obviously, I'll make sure it's flat against the back of the model, so it like you know it lines up with the back of the model again, so it will go against the wall for the background. Then it's just a case of cutting out a piece of card to fill in that gap at the front. And I just used my scissors just to mark out where I was going to cut it and then glue that into place. Like so. And to glue that you just put glue um, on either of the edges at the top and then at the uh, back of the bottom lip and it'll stick it into place. I did tr trim it a couple of times just to make sure it fit without any real big gaps or anything. And it's just worth holding onto the roof when you stick that down just to make sure. And then I put some glue behind the base of that triangle just to get it stick down. And then the next thing I needed to do, which I have made the mistake of not doing until after I finished the model, which is a pain, you have to make sure you cut the windows out first. Um, if you leave it and try and cut them out once you've finished all the layers of the model, it can, it's a lot harder to cut them out. So it's always best to do it first. And I just used my uh, scalpel just to do that, just to cut the uh, windows out. Because later on, what I'm going to do is get different lights and stuff in each of the houses. Um, it's a mixture of um, micro LEDs, little LED candles, and it's like a little spotlight thing. I'm using different combination of those for the haunted house. Um, the haunted village to light up the houses of the night time so you need an opening for the light to come out and I always like to have um, the light so it can come through the windows but obviously I do boarded up windows so it's not like just a big rectangle like this otherwise you'd see all the LEDs inside and I cut out a couple of windows on the sides as well. And then the next thing I started to do was to put the um, sort of finish to the front of the house. And to do that, what you do is you take thinner cardboard box card, like um, cereal box card, cut it into one centimetre strips and have it as whatever the width is of the building that you're creating. And you place them on the model and glue them into position and then you just layer them overlapping slightly and you use that to cover the whole of the um, model and it makes it look like it's made out of planks of wood and I also cut out small one centimeter by one and a half centimeter uh, little rectangles of card to use as um, roof tiles as well so as you can see I'm just layering that cardboard one over the top of each other make sure you don't cut it straight because you want it to look more like natural wood and what you do is you score lines in it with the scissors later on to add the sort of woody texture to it and then I also go over it with a hot glue hot glue gun um, just get a small amount of glue on the end of the gun and go backwards and forwards over where you've created the planks to create the wood texture and once you've covered the whole thing um, what you need to do next is paint the whole thing black 
and then what you do is do a wash of burnt is this burnt umber i always mix up burnt umber and burnt sienna it's one of the two and basically you take a watered down version of the brown and go over the top of the black with it it adds a bit of a brownie tint to the wood because i want it to look like old wood um and i like it to be black for the base because it makes all the colors really dull and dark and it just adds to that adds that black tone to everything um, which is what i like for the look of the village and um, that i'm making and i do a little wash of the brown over the top to make it look like it's like a really dark um wood basically like a brown and black wood and i go over the um, roof tiles and the whole thing with that brown wash and then once i've done the brown wash over the top i use my heat gun to dry off the building and make sure all that layer of brown is dry so as you can see i'm just making sure i cover everything and the texture that's in the wood that's from the hot glue where i've gone over the um the wood the cardboard in the hot glue backwards and forwards to create that wood texture i quite like how it works and also i find because there's a layer of hot glue on everything the model is a little bit stronger um and that detail starts to show up a bit with the um the wash of brown which is what I quite like as well and all the houses I've done in the background I've made exactly the same way um, I've just varied the shapes slightly because obviously I don't want loads of identical houses like the colors the colors are all pretty identical but the houses are all different shapes As you can see, it just adds to that colour. It just makes it, I don't know, it just looks, I like the colour. I like how it turns out. I like how it's more like a sort of really dull, subdued brown, like a really, really old wood type colour. And obviously, don't forget as well, um, acrylic paint dries slightly darker than what it goes on wet. So what I'm doing here is applying it slightly lighter than I want it to be. Um, and you buy like a little shade or two. Um, and then once it dries, it all sort of tones down and dulls down a bit. And I made sure I covered the entire like um, front porch area as well. Um, and I also did the same colour wash on the roof. Then took my heat gun to just dry off that colour wash. This means that A, the model dries a bit quicker, um, and B, it means I can finish the model in the same day. Because I like to just sit down and get it done. I don't want to sort of do a layer, leave it to dry for an hour, do another layer, leave it to dry for an hour, and it takes like five times as long. I find this is a nice quick way. All you've got to be careful of is don't hold the, the heat gun too close to the model um, because it'll start making the um, hot glue soften that's holding everything together. And obviously you don't want to completely melt the hot glue. Um, also, as you can look on the planks on the window, there's little blobs on the window to look like nails in the wood those are actually made with hot glue as well and then once the brown layers dry i take some white and dry brush that over the top it's like a mixture of grown white uh, basically i use whatever's on the brush and mix it with a bit of white and then dry brush with that and this really picks out the texture uh, that i've put in the wood and also it it had, it makes it look like it's really old, um, makes it not look like cardboard anymore and it fits in with the colour scheme that I've chosen for the Haunted Village. All the houses are this sort of grey, browny um, colour. So yeah, makes it fit in with the rest of the models too. And I just did all the areas that have got like lots of texture. I made sure I went over them a couple of times to make sure that air, that um, texture stood out. And as you can see, it just makes the um, the texture of the tiles and the texture that I've put, like the wood texture, stand out a lot 
from the model because without that it sort of all just looks dull and you can't really see the texture unless you look close the awkward part is doing inside the porch way um what i might do in the future is paint the porch area and then stick the support beams in because i found the support beams get in the way um i haven't decided yet though um, but i might do that for the next project and as you can see here i'm just going over and the paint is ex incredibly dry on my brush um there's virtually no moisture left on my brush at all and it's like i'm sort of applying like it's like a thick paste to my brush because you want the paint really dry just so it catches those very top layers otherwise it will soak into all the little nooks and crannies and sort of ruin the effect and the advantage of doing it this way as well is if you decide you don't like it you just go over the whole thing in brown and black again and start again um you can add more brown you can add more black you could add a bit of green you could add whatever color you want if you didn't quite like this color so that's one thing i like about dry brushing is you can put washes of other colors over the top and it works quite well but because the whites in some of those raised places, they come out slightly lighter, so you still get the same sort of sort of effect. It just works really well, and it's a nice, quick and easy effect to do as well. As you can see, it just makes all those details pop. And then I decided to do the same on the inside, even though the inside's not really going to get seen because um, it's going to be against the wall. I decided to decorate the inside anyway, um, just in case I decided to see that part of it later on, I suppose. I think it was just for the sake of completion, really. And I did the same um, dry brushing on the inside, but I just used white on the inside. I didn't use the, br the brown. Um, and also, as you can see, I haven't added the texture to the walls. I wanted the walls to look a bit flatter, as if there's like a layer of... Um, plaster over the top of the wood but i like because it's corrugated cardboard you still get the lines in it so it almost looks like the planks are showing through the plaster kind of effect which i kind of liked as well so i did the dry brushing on the inside as well and then once i was happy with how that looked i used a bit of glue and added i've got this um green fake moss stuff from the modeling shop and i just added that in patches around the model um and that was it really uh, one thing i also did was add some micro leds on the inside um these were ones i just got off, off online it's like a box of there's a box of eight or twelve of them at one point i've used in various models over time and um just added that to the upstairs and downstairs of the building um so i could make sure it would light up and then glow obviously at night time um and that's it hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now